they really face a problem in investing this much of amount into the textbook. So keeping this into mind, the idea of OER like popped up, like why not to have something which could be available for all this, uh, everybody, uh, whether financially can, uh, it's liable or not, or whether the person can afford it or not. And uh, just keeping that, so just uh, equity, to maintain the equity and the balance in the education system, this idea of OER popped up to help the students from different backgrounds and different fraternities. Now, what is OER and what exactly OER includes? So not necessarily OER is only the textbooks or only the material available in on web. It could be in different forms. So here I've listed some of the resources which could be OER, could be textbook, could be entire course, some modules, even PPTs, assessment materials, quiz banks, video images, syllabi, lesson plans. So anything coming under this paradigm could be included as an OER material. Not necessarily there should be like some textbook which can only form the OER material. So OER, it's not restricted. It can be in different form. As far as it is useful and available for the people who are really interested to use and utilize the resources. Now, the next question which comes when we talk about the OER, that is open educational resources, is that because most of the time we talk, okay, it's the resources available in the website, it's out over there, so, so, etc. So does it mean OER have to be digital? So to clarify over here, no, not necessarily OER has to be digital, but yes, most of the time it is. So as I said, the idea of OER popped up because of the um, in the, like huge or massive usage of the internet, because seeing that the internet is used widely and globally and everywhere, this idea popped up like so that it could be easily available to the people from anywhere and at any time. So keeping that in mind, the idea of having some open educational resources came up and because of that, I would say most of the time, OER is digital, but not necessarily. Now, another thing uh, like uh, the confusion or the notion people have like, oh, if something is OER, is that free? Uh, so if it is free, now is free and open. So when we say OER, it's open educational resources. So does that mean free and open are same? So just to clarify over here, free and open, when I say open educational resources, so is it free or is it open or does that have same meaning? So logically, yes, but technically if you see, free and open are two different terms as far as OER is con uh, concerned. So I'm targeting OER and based on that, uh, this is the slide which I'm presenting over here. When I say free, that means something which is available for no cost. So that's it. Like some material which is available for which you're not paying any money, you can say, okay, that is free. But as far as OER is concerned, where we say it is openly available, it's just not having no cost. But along with that, it comes with different properties. Like not having any cost along with that, this is the resource or this is the material which could be redistributed, retained, reused, revised, and remixed. So that is the difference, basic difference between freely available material and open educational resources. So open educational resources allow the people who are using it to just modify, add on their own material, redistribute, keeping in mind what the original author has intended, how the original author want the material to be distributed or to be used by another person who is using the material, which is OER. Now, what are the benefits? I won't again go too much into detail. Everybody knows. So main thing is OER can help address equity issues. As I said, like people from different background, from different financial background, uh, as far as OER is concerned, that doesn't matter. Anybody can use it anywhere, anytime. Now next benefits of OER, the main benefit is improve global education because it is globally available and 
globalized in the sense people from different fraternity background uh, can access this material now what are the although oer is used and it is becoming popular day by day it is becoming very useful there are certain barriers which are still stopping oer being used globally or being used in that percentage that uh, intensity how it is inted, intended to be used so some of the things are sometime oer becomes overwhelming as i said most of the time it is digital so sometimes the people who are not very hands on to use the digital system or uh, multimedia etc for them it might be little difficult to access the resource and the learning curve because again it uh, people who are very well versed using the website using the system maybe find it very easy to access and understand the material uh, topic content etc but people who are not may still find it a uh, difficult to understand and to grab grab the content as far as again another main reason is traditional mindset still people have the mindset of having the textbook having something in uh, hard copies and prefer to use that instead of using something which is uh, getting transformed into digital form wow. so these are some of the barriers which are still uh, stopping the adoption complete or 100% adoption of oer which should be really looked into now as far as oer is concerned these are some of the parameters which are to be included uh, when we in uh, try to generate open educational resources that is called as five r's which are nothing but reuse retain revise remix and redistribute that means whenever oer or open educational resource or material is created it should have these properties it should be uh, people should be able to revise it or the author who is using should be able to revise it remix tweak it add on or redistribute depending upon again as i said how the original author wants his or her material to be used by another author that is what i'll be talking in my next uh, coming slides now next question is again they, these are the two different terms which are very commonly used this is the term which is very commonly used as copyright what exactly you mean copyright so do you own a copyright so yes everybody who generate any material any content anything holds the copyright whenever anything is created or generated first time so for example you paint some picture so that is copyrighted whoever paints a picture or have that image will have the copyright license like anybody else using that will have to take the permission of the person who has created so anything you create first time you hold the copyright of that particular tangible material or medium whatever is being created it could be anything it could be picture it could be material it could be some document etc now what is copyright so as far as anybody is holding copyright or in very simple term copyright means all rights are reserved that means it's not freely available for others to use now what is the requirement for anything to be listed under copyright it should be original work it should be fixed in a tangible medium not imaginary it should be like tangible tangible medium right that creators have over their literary and artistic works and any copyright in material could last for 70 years after death of an author so even if the author dies till the 70 years of the death of the author the copyright will be still holded by that particular author now these are some of the limitations if something is publicly available fair use etc in that case it is not copyrighted yeah now coming to the main topic that is licensing with creative commons now what are creative commons licenses these are copyright licenses so now here is slight difference copyright means all rights are reserved but as far as creative commons licenses are concerned these are copyright licenses that provide a simple standardized way to give the public permission to share and use your or their creative work on conditions of your choice so this is how 
copyrighted material and the creative common license material is differentiated if something is copyrighted all rights are reserved that means if any author any second author wants to use that material something which is copyrighted cannot use a re, uh, redistribute or do the modification without taking permission of that particular author who has copyrighted material his or her material but as far as cop common creative licenses are concerned it is uh, it gives permission to the author to use the material but only with uh, some conditions what author has imposed on that particular original material so traditional all rights are reserved copyright can limit the reach of work so as far as copyright where all rights are reserved could limit the reach of the work access of the work which is being done but as far as creative common licenses are concerned the reach of the work could be increased that means more number of people can reach to the work utilize it use it and also modify it and share it based on keeping in mind how the original author wants them to do now how original author informs to the new author what the author wants or what are the limitations authors have put that is where the creative common licenses and the types of licenses play the role so how did they work cc licenses are legal tools that creators and other right holders can use to grant certain usage rights to the public while reserving other rights so these are available publicly people can use them freely but considering the rights what authors have imposed so i'll go to the next slide where with picture it will give more clear idea now how do you create cc license so cc license that is creative common licenses we know what does it mean briefly so far like something uh, some resources some material which is being licensed but still available for others to use it under certain conditions but how do we create this license so now to create cc license that is common uh, cre creative common license we do not have to apply or uh, follow some particular procedure or rule it's very simple uh, we need to just review there are like web pages where you can go you can put your requirement of how you want your work to be utilized by others and accordingly the license can be generated so for example here i have one web page which i would like to open and show like if you yeah so this is how we create the uh, creative common licenses so as i said we do not have to apply we do not have to follow any specific method so there are web pages which are already available only the author has to give his or her intention of how their work should be utilized in future so for example if allow adaptations of your work to be shared so this is a question which is being asked now if author says yes and also allow commercial users of your work so for example i am author and if i can i'm okay to allow my work to be used commercially by somebody else who is going to use that particular work i say yes and accordingly the license is generated so you can see over here it is cc excuse, excuse me uh, uh priya uh, yeah. we're just we're just uh, you're sharing you're still sharing your um your slide presentation oh uh, okay uh, uh one second i guess i did uh post the link to the yeah uh, to the chat as well just in case yeah um, i'll try to it. share my text on So yeah, is it visible now? Yes, it is. Yeah. So yeah, here I would like I wanted to show this page where, like, by using this page, we can create our own licenses. Now, what are the different types of licenses? I'll be talking very soon about that. But just to give an idea, like as I said, you do not have to apply or you do not have to follow any specific procedure. Only already the web pages are created and you can give your requirement as an author for example if you are the original author and if you uh, want to allow adaptations of your work to be shared you can say yes no or yes as long as other authors share your work alike etc you can just put your intention again whether you want to you are okay 
for your work to be used commercially? Yes or no? You can just put your answers over here and you can see the license is generated over here. And then you can take this logo and paste it under your work and it gives uh, right idea to the author or to the people who are using your own work. Now, for example, if I am not okay to allow adaptations of my work to be shared, so I can say just no. And I'm also not okay that my work should be used commercially or for some business purposes. I can say no. And then accordingly, you can see the license logo changes. So it's very easy. It's very simple. Only we need to understand what different licenses mean. So that I'll be taking, like covering it up now. But just wanted to show like how simple it is to create the uh, license and use it for your work. Now, coming back to the slide, yeah. So these are the different logos which uh, uh, like uh, which can be used or which gives an idea to the author, to the another author who is using the work of the original author. So for example, this is attribution by, which in, uh, indicates that the work is publicly available. That means anybody can use this work as per their usage. They can use it, they can redistribute it, they can modify, they can use it for commercial purposes, etc. This logo that is no derivatives means no addition could be done. That means you can use original author's work, but you cannot do any add-ons, you cannot modify. This logo means you can use the author, original author's work as your work, but you need to share alike. Now, when I say share alike, share alike means share alike with the same license with which the original author has shared it. Non-commercial, that means you cannot, you can use the work, you can redistribute it, but you cannot use it for any commercial purposes. You cannot use to generate any royalty by using the original author's work. Now, these are some of the licenses uh, which are there. So you can see here, uh, they are graded as most open to least open. And you can see over here, first one is the most open that as I already mentioned, that is attribution CC by, which is the most open license, which does not impose any restriction on the original work. That means this is as equivalent as the free or open or public domain work. So anybody, any person, any second or third per person can use the work of the original author without uh, having any restriction. They can use it for commercial purposes. They can redistribute it. They can modify the original work. They can do whatever they want to do with the original work. But only the thing is they have to uh, tag the original author. They have to give credit to the original author. Now, next license, you can see CC BY, and then along with that, SA is added, which is the logo for share alike. So that indicates this work, the original work is publicly available, but when somebody who is using the original author's work is uh, redistributing the work, it should be shared alike. Now, shared alike means it should be shared with the original license. So let us say if the original author would have been would have, would have assigned the license as attribution CC by the second author when second author is using the work of the original author, the original license should be maintained. Now next one's third one, if you see it is attribution, no derivatives CC by ND. So here you can see the new logo is added that is ND, which indicates the work is available publicly, but no additions can be made to the original work. The new author has to use the original author's work as it is. So there cannot be any modification. So these are actually two uh, different logos, which uh, most of the time are very confusing. Share alike means not the work. Share alike means the license should be shared alike. The same license should be maintained. When I said no derivative, that means the work, the content, should also be same. There should not be any modification into the content, but the license can be modified. The new author can have his or her own license. So this is the difference between these two logos and these two licenses. Next one is CC by no C. So CC by is common. When NC is added, that is non-commercial. That means this license indicates 
this work is available, but not for commercial usages. So new, any author using the work of the original author can use the work, redistribute it, tweak it, etc. but they cannot use it for any commercial purposes. So that will be like just uh, 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 not following the rule and then violating the laws, etc. And for that, there are again some strict actions, which are there are some laws, which uh, again uh, could, should not be broken. So people using the original author's work should follow what license the original author has uh, tagged up with the material or with the resources what the original author has created. Now, next one, if you see, it is CC by NC. So that means non-commercially, the work cannot be used for any commercial purposes. Plus, when the work is redistributed, it should be shared alike. That is the license of the original work or original author's license should be still maintained. The last one is, that is the, which gives least openness to the any person who is using original author's license, which says CC by no commercial and no derivatives. That means the work can be used, but without any modification and without uh, 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 being used for any commercial purpose. So the original work can be used, but no modifications are allowed as per the license. Plus also the work, the reused work cannot be used for any commercial purposes. If it is used for any commercial purposes or if any modifications are being made in the original author's work, then that will be actually violating the law, uh, laws of the licenses. So here, if you see, uh, when we say OER material, so OER material has to be licensed to allow others to use the open educational resources freely, but still with the restrictions. So sometimes people have that fear when you create or generate the open educational resources or material, uh, their work or their material, their content is open to others. So sometimes they have that fear. So you, although your work is open out for public usage, you can still protect your work as per your requirement or as per your rules and regulations, like how you want your work to be reused or redistributed. And if you see the licenses, the first one is the most open, which is as good as public domain, like uh, which does not have any restriction. But as you go move downwards, it imposes the restrictions and the restrictions become harder and harder and harder. So I would say if you go to the least one, it becomes very much closer to the copyrighted material, but still not exactly the copyrighted material because it still allows others to use the work, to reach to the work, but the restrictions imposed are very, very strict. Yeah, now coming to this particular slide here, um, like I've put up the benefits and limitations. So again, I will skip this because already we have I've spoken about this in the previous slide. But uh, yeah, the slides would be, PPTs would be available if you want a little more detailed understanding of each license, you can just go through it. So the very common license, which is uh, publicly open is called a CCO, which is the public domain, which does not have any restriction, not even required to even uh, tag the author or credit the author. But as far as CC BY is concerned, this is also very open license, but it still requires uh, the author to be credited. So who's or whoever's work anybody is using, they should give proper credit, but they can redistribute or reuse it, use it for commercial purpose, not, like however the new author want to use the work of the original author, they are free to use it. Then CC BY SA, share alike, then BY ND, that is no derivatives, no modifications, by NC, that means not commercial, cannot be used for any commercial purposes. This says by NCSA, that means no commercial usage. Along with that, it should be shared alike. The same license should be maintained. And then this uh, CC by NC and D, that means no commercial usage. Also, no modifications are allowed. But this, in this case, the license need not to be the same whatever original authors have, uh, like uh, uh, what license the original author has given to 
his or her work. The license could be changed, but the content cannot be modified. Now, coming to this particular slide, it gives very uh, brief picture. What are the different permissions and what are the different restrictions available for each, imposed on each particular license? So altogether, we have six to seven licenses, where first one is public domain, that is CC0, which has like copy and publish. It could be copied, it could be published, it could be used for commercial usage, it could be modified and adopted. It can be used with change license. That means you can change the license of the original author's license and again redistribute it. What is not, this is cross mark because it says attribution required, no. That means even it does not demand that the original author should be credited. So that free it is. It's like it is totally open out and it can be used any ways the new author or anybody who is using the original work want to use it. Absolutely zero restriction. But as you move further, CC BY, even it gives a lot of rights. So even uh, it is very much similar to the public domain, but it has one restriction that is attribution is required. So whenever any work, any OER is licensed by CC BY, you can use it as per your, your like requirement as for your liking, but only the thing is you have to always credit the original author, the attribution. When I say attribution required, that means crediting the original author is required. So for example, if you're using somebody's work, you have to, at the bottom or somewhere, you have to reference the original author. That is the meaning of this. Now, CC by SA. So even this is very open, but uh, uh, yeah. Here, the thing is, change of license is not required. So that's what I was uh, saying earlier. S, A, and N, D, they are very similar, but only the differences in CC by S, A, that is share alike, you cannot change the license. The license of the original author has to be maintained. As far as CC by N, D is required, concern, you can not modify. So you cannot modify, but you can change the license as per your requirement or whatever license you want to have it. Maybe original author has kept it public domain and you want to make it CC by ND, you are free to do that. Now CC by NC, you can see copy publish is allowed, attribution is needed, commercial use is restricted. You cannot use for any commercial purposes. CC by NC SA, everything is permitted except commercial use as and share alike. And the last one is most restricted which gives uh, very little permission or little rights to the new author and it restricts any commercial use as well as any modification and adaptation. So as any time, if any author is saying Andy, it actually imposes a lot of restrictions because in that case, you cannot do any modification. You have to use the work as it is. Plus you also need to credit the original author. So basically you are just copying the material or content from somebody putting it as it is and just crediting that particular author. Now, as far as open educational resources licenses are concerned, so we have Creative Commons licenses and there are ample number of resources and the uh, pages available digitally or the websites which use Creative Commons licenses. One of the, like uh, uh, this one, all the, the website which is very, and the license which is used is Pixabay. This is basically for images. So if you are creating some material and you want some Creative Commons license material, because when you are, yeah, one more thing we have to keep it in mind, when you create OER, you should have the material which you are using for creating your own OER. You should have Creative Commons license material or content used in your OER. That is what expected, like if I'm not wrong. So these are some of the websites which are given and Pixabay is one of the most popularly used for images, which are Creative Commons licensed. And this particular website, I've provided the link which talks about different alternatives of Pixabay. So there are Libre, Store, uh, so many other like, uh, licenses and the websites are available where you get different types of images which are creative common license now as far as engineering or technical material is concerned this is another link provided over here 
which is basically for technical materials. And uh, Liberate Tech is actually another one famous uh, material, OER licensed material, which is uh, again Creative Commons licensed and very, uh, like it's used very widely for creating the technical and engineering material. So if you're creating, let us say, for some welding material, mechanics design or uh, mechatronics, these kind of technical and engineer, engineering courses or materials, you can just go through these websites and utilize the material to use it for your, to create your own OER material. Yeah. So now uh, moving on to next. So how to create OER? So how do I openly license work I make? How do I credit work I use? I guess I'm getting it. So now how do I make OER? So when you make OER, you have to choose proper CC license. So OER is nothing but it's just some material, but which should have CC license. That is the meaning of OER. And now if someone else holds copyright, make sure you use it, you give proper attribution. So that is what is basically the meaning of having OER with Creative Commons licenses. Now, moving on to the next slide. Here, uh, this particular slide just tells like how you can have your own license. So for example, if you have created your material, you can have title, author, and license. This pattern you can follow, which we call it as TAL, where title and source would be the title of the material or the content which you are creating. Next could be, Beside that, you can put the name of the author, which could be you or whoever is creating the material. And next could be the license. So for example, if you want the material which you are creating to be CC BY, so you can just put next to that CC BY. And this four is nothing but the version, which is nothing but the advancement on the, onto the original license. So you will find four, four, dot o or maybe the still advanced version in each license so it is nothing but like having some advancement or having some extra rights or leeway given to the people who are using the oer material of the original author yeah now concluding uh here uh like this slide talks like uh, slight difference which uh, exists between creative commons and the copyright so many times this is the confusion which people have like creative commons and then copyright so even if you use the copyright material you use it but you credit the people and how basically these two differ so the basic difference is in creative commons some rights are reserved that means you can use the material with some rights which are reserved with some rules and regulations which original author has already imposed on the material which that author has created so you have to follow what the author says and you can use that particular material as far as copyright material is concerned like something which is being copyright that means all rights are reserved that means you cannot use it now now still the the copyrighted work some author who has copyrighted his or her work, let others to use it, but with proper channels. So we need to communicate to the original author, get the permission, see what author says. So sometimes they deny, but if they agree, you should have proper documentation. Okay, if this is the copyrighted material and you have used it, so whether you have the permission from the original author or not, which is uh, like, uh, not required in the creative common license because the license itself talks what the original author wants when the work of the original author is being used by public yeah so that's about all about creative common license and the different types of licenses so yeah i'm done and uh, this is my email id if you need any questions or anything in future yeah please uh, feel free to just email me and yeah, next question and answers. Any questions? These are some of the references which I've used. And yeah, they are very useful if you are actually creating the OER materials, so especially for engineering materials. Libre text is something which I found very, very useful. So if you go to that Libre text page or the link that also provided in the slides, 
So you have like different options, different resources. So it's like a bucket. So you can choose, for example, if you want to create material for mechanic design or maybe welding. So you can choose that under that, you can go to the specific topic or domain. So for example, mechatronics, under mechatronics, I need motors. Again, under motors, I need DC motor, stepper motor, AC motor. So materials is all materials are already available. But as far as engineering, OER material is concerned, still I feel there is a lot of gap. Still, the material is not overwhelming. So we really need to uh, like give a lot of input and support to create the OER material related to engineering and uh, technical stuff. Is there any okay. questions? Okay, I'm. Uh, uh, thank you for all of the information on Creative Commons licenses. I think that would be helpful for um, those here who may not have, uh, who may have been hearing about Creative Commons licenses uh, in some of these presentations, but might not have seen them. So uh, thank you so much for that um, recording.